So since the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3 have been released, we have seen a loads of new features and settings and name changes added to the DJI Fly app on the RC2. And this is pretty difficult to get your head around all of these different settings, what they all mean, especially for beginners, but also for pros as well. So in today's video, I'm going to actually give you a full breakdown on the best settings that I use and what they all mean in 2024. Let's go. Okay, so when you open up your DJI Mini 4 Pro or your DJI Air 3, this is now the new home screen. So you've got before you fly, quick transfer and service. So before we get into the actual drone settings, let's have a quick talk about these. Before you fly is a fantastic new addition. This allows you to actually search for any location. And then let's just say for instance, Barcelona. And now it will show us all these different thumbnails of other drone pilots who have been to this area and shared their photos. So not only is it great for inspiration, it also allows you to input the model of drone you have. So let's just say in the Mini 4 Pro, for example, now it will actually show me the area that I can fly in, any restrictions and any actual decent fly spots. I can also change to say the DJI Air 3, and this will tell me what I need to do to get prepared, operator registration, labeling on the aircraft. This allows you to actually prepare in advance before you go to these places. And quick transfer is now also on the home screen. So if we click on that, this allows you to quickly transfer photos and videos from your drone to the DJI Fly app. And service is also now on the home screen. So let's just click on that. And this is fantastic. It allows you to put in a service request. So have you got a problem with your drone? Have you had a flyaway? You can now do all of this directly through the DJI Fly app on the home screen. It's also got lots of frequently asked questions that you can go through here. All right, so especially the before you fly section, that is fantastic. But let's look at the actual drone settings. Let's click on go fly. Now the main screen, this is what you're gonna see all of the time, but we're gonna dive into the actual settings. So you want to click on the top right hand corner of those three dots. So we're going to click on there. So the first page is safety. Now obstacle avoidance action. These are your obstacle avoidance sensors. I would say set these to bypass 90% of the time. So if it sees an object, it's going to actually fly around them. Now if I'm flying through tight spaces or gaps, I will turn my sensors off. But majority of the time, I would say keep them on. And I would have the bypassing option set to normal. Nifty is a little bit too risky and you even have to click OK to activate that. You want to make sure your radar map is turned on. This will show you in the bottom left hand corner the current stability of the drone. You can also see the map and you can also now look out of the obstacle avoidance cameras and get a live view feed from the drone. This is fantastic again when you're in tight spaces. So always have that display radar turned on. We also have a new menu called AR settings. These are fantastic. So select that and turn all of these on. These are fantastic. So now you get an AR our home point. So when you're actually flying the drone, it will show you a little H icon showing you your home point all the time. And when the drone is coming back to you in a return to home, it also shows you on screen this green line, which will show you the actual line the drone is going to take to come back to you. And then when you're actually landing the drone, you can see an AR shadow. So it shows you exactly where that drone is going to land in relation to this shadow on the actual ground. So all of these AR settings are brilliant. I'm really glad they're here. Make sure they're all turned on. And advanced safety settings at the bottom of safety. We've got a new option here as well. Firstly, signal lost. Have this to return to home. So if you do lose signal, it will come back to you automatically. But if you're moving, let's say you're on a boat, you might be riding a bike, just set that to hover. And at the very bottom of this menu, we now see vision positioning and obstacle sensing. This now allows you to turn off the downward obstacle avoidance sensor. So what this does then is this will allow the drone to actually come down and land so much faster there'll be no resistance whatsoever in it landing this is going to be perfect if you're on a fast moving boat or vehicle and you want the drone to come down fast and actually land in place but be warned this comes down really fast and you can do damage to your drone so only actually use it in that example there and this video is sponsored by motion vfx and i cannot stress to you how important this is for any video creator i use their plugins every single day so the mkbhd plugin i love that 
all the time I'm using that for giving you information on screen and graphics like if I'm talking about this drone here I can list everything on screen with all of these different plugins the iJustine plugin is fantastic for giving information in really bold like Apple like presentation fonts so fantastic for reviews they also have thousands of different plugins that you can choose from available for Final Cut Pro DaVinci Resolve Premiere Pro now another thing I like to do is actually put text behind a person or an object when I'm talking about it just to make it actually stand out a little bit more so if I'm talking now to actually get text behind me what I would actually have to do is go and manually get the pen tool and mask every single part of this clip it takes absolutely ages but they've got a plugin called Rotor AI so this gives you a magic brush so all you do is you just highlight over me like this it'll automatically detect me it will track me automatically then all you need to do is get a text put it behind me and then that is done. So I can't recommend this enough for any video creators. I'm gonna link it at the top of the description. I highly recommend if you're just getting started in YouTube or you're doing this and you're enjoying video editing, but you want something which is gonna save you a lot of time, this is one of the best applications, the best websites that me personally, I'm using all the time. Go and check it out. If we now move over to control, you'll see smart shots settings. Basically, this is a new name change. So you know Active Track is now called Active Shots and Focus Track is called Smart Shots. I'm not 100% sure why the name change. I love the word Active Track. I'm always gonna get it wrong, but this basically is what it is. And Active Shots is the best it's ever been on both of these drones. You've got an inner and an outer circle where that drone's gonna track you from. But in this menu, you've got even more finer controls now. So on the inner circle, I want that drone to track me really close, but I can also have the outer radius and increase that. So when it's on the outer circle, that drone's gonna be at a more fixed distance away, so I can show more of that landscape. I can also adjust the height as well. So if you want the drone to be a bit higher up automatically, you can adjust these. So go ahead and just screenshot some of my settings here. But for the outer height, for example, I want to actually increase that to have that drone higher up and further away on that outer ring than it's currently set from the factory settings. The camera motion, how fast that drone is going to track you. So if you're just walking, have it set to normal, but if you're on like a pedal bike or you're running pretty fast, you can set that to fast. And I've turned near ground flight on. Now this allows the actual drone to go below two meters when tracking you. So don't have this on if there's loads of obstacles, but it is really good if you're tracking you when you're running or walking or even on a bike and you wanna get some really low shots. Now, if you're in a vehicle, you don't get an inner circle, you only get the outer circle. So the camera motion, you can also adjust that. So if you're not going too fast and you want some more cinematic shots of your vehicle, select normal. But if you are going pretty fast, you want that drone to keep up and able to actually change the actual angle faster, then select fast. Now under gain and expo tuning, you've got two options here really, which are pretty good and, and new. So under Cine, you now have the option under max horizontal and ascent and descent speed to actually decrease all of these values to one meter per second. This is going to get you really, really slow cinematic shots. So just like the old tripod mode on the DJI Mavic series, we now have this on the mini and the air as well. So if you want really slow shots, don't overdo it, but for the occasions that you do, change this to 1.0. And under Expo, this is going to give you more fine controls on how the actual drone handles itself in the air. So I did a full video on this, but I just find when you first get this drone, you turn it on from factory, it's it's just too erratic. It's not smooth at all. So I actually changed the Expo settings to actually have a finer control on this drone and just have it more cinematic. So again, screenshot this screen here. But that's what I have my Mini and Air set to under Cine mode. You want the actual gimbal rotation to be super smooth and also be smooth at the end of that rotation again it's too fast out of the factory and it looks terrible so i've changed mine to four meters per second as the tilt speed and the smoothness to 15. Under button customization, this allows you to actually customize the C1 and C2 buttons on the back of the drone. So I have mine selected to C1 as cruise control. So all you need to do is hit that button once and the drone will go into autopilot and continue flying in the actual angle it was flying at originally. This is fantastic. It means you don't have to fly that drone manually yourself. You can just select autopilot via cruise control, which is great. And then my C2 button, 
Again, I've got loads of different options here, but I have mine set to the portrait landscape switch. So I can actually get a video in full horizontal. I can hit that button once, the camera will rotate, and I can now get a portrait shot or video and then share that on Instagram. Now under camera color, I have it selected to D log M. This is going to give you a flat color profile. You can use then custom looks like the ones I've got available for these drones. But if you're not fully familiar about color grading, you're just starting off. Normal is going to be good enough. So select normal and under grid lines, I always have the middle one turned on. This is the rule of thirds. Now you can turn all three on. I just think it gets a bit messy and it's not easy to see what you're actually filming, but just have the middle one on. The rule of thirds going to allow you to frame your shots so much better. Now the actual shutter speed and ND filters, I've done a full video on that, which I'll link at the end of this video, but I would say turn your sharpness down to minus one. Because it's got an F1.7 aperture, the drone will have a high shutter speed without using ND filters. So I personally have got an ND filter on all of the time, but if you don't have ND filters and you're just starting off, turn that sharpening down to minus one to get better results. And onto the main screen, you can actually touch anywhere on the screen. This will then focus. So get into a habit of actually tapping on that screen and where you want the drone to focus on. You can actually click on the bottom right hand corner. This will bring you up this new like fast menu. It allows you to actually change your resolution, your frames per second, and also switch between color modes like normal and D log M, all from this actually pop up menu. It's a lot faster than going into the main settings. And on the main screen, you see all these little icons everywhere. You can actually click on these and it will show you more information. So like the battery information, the signal strength, do you have your optical avoidance sensors on, how many satellites you've got. Each one of these you can actually tap on. And you see this orange bar at the top of the screen. This shows you any warnings. So you can actually click on there and it will be a pre-flight checklist showing you what you need to do before you go off and fly or any issues with that drone. But crucially, when your drone is actually in the air flying, it will also show you any warnings that come on to the drone as well. So if you see an orange or a red bar, click on that it will show you the problem you can then bring that drone back to you and investigate it and both these drones are fantastic at filming at night they've got night video mode so if you click on video and click on night what this does is when you're actually filming it's going to automatically apply its own noise reduction but it also boosts the iso by quite a lot as well you can now actually use up to iso 12800 so if it's really dark this is going to help you out a lot now although i'm showing you all of these different settings now when you're out flying that drone you probably will forget some of these so i brought out my own cheat sheets and these are available for the dji mini 4 pro the mini 3 pro the air 3 every single one of the dji drones and these go through through all of these settings today that I'm showing you, but they're on a digital download. So you can get these and store them on your phone. So you have access then to the key settings, the important settings you need to change and how to get the very most out of your drone. And with these cheat sheets, you can either print them all out and actually store them in your camera bag, or you can actually keep them on your phone, iPad, tablet. You've always got them with you then. And they go through every single setting, but also giving you a lot of help and advice on how to get the very most out of your drone. So if you want to go and check these out, I know loads of you have already bought these and thanks so much for the actual feedback feedback and support to this channel. If you've not got them, they're going to be linked at the top of the description as well. It gets emailed out to you instantly. So it's an instant download. So you have access to these straight away. There's no waiting around. They're available for all the different DJI drones. So I really do hope you found that helpful. My 2024 walkthrough on the DJI Fly app for both of these drones. It is great to see that since both of these have been released, we have had all of these new features. And I'm always encouraging DJI to give us more, give us more features for the current drones we already have. So let's hope this continues and we might see even more features going forward. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you hit that like button. That's all I ask. It just helps get this video to more people. Subscribe if you're new around here because I've got loads of content coming really soon. The season is now just picking up. So lots of exciting videos to share with you. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate every single one of you for watching this. Go and check out my cheat sheets if you want to get the very most out of this with the settings on both of these drones are available on my website linked at the top of the description. And if you're a video creator, I cannot recommend Motion VFX enough for all these titles and plugins. Thanks so much for watching again, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.